the internal dynamo. So then part one of the book is the external stuff. Part two is like the internal stuff. Mm-hmm. And part three is the sort of... Uh, mm, mm, don't really know what part three... How part three fits into the visual, but... Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, let's try to poke holes now. Yes. So like, mm-hmm. what would people... What are all the problems with this model? <laughs> like, what would, you know, not a nice comment say to this? Like, I'm just hmm, what a not nice comment say to this. They would say that this is all just like fancy airbrushing of the phrase intrinsic motivation, which has already been done. Do you think? I disagree with okay. that. Uh, I would disagree with that as well. But yeah, like, because yeah. I think it goes again. It's not the same as drive, which I like mm. because drive it implies that some people have it, some people don't. Mm. Whereas what you're saying is everyone has the potential yes. to have this internal motivation and mm. being internally driven you just have to but there are ways you can optimize it maximize yep. it unlock it yeah which i think is nice yeah it's like you don't already have to be the ceo yep to get it's value like, yeah social bit so okay so power is autonomy uh progress can be mastery people is obviously like the social stuff uh, gamification, yeah, definitely play. play. Um, mindset, uh, mental stance, engagement stance, attitude aura, like these sort of doing things mindfully and like being fully mm. absorbed in the thing. Being intentional. Intentionality. Like this w- was where the, another P of perspective uh-huh. would have worked if we're going down that route. It's like if you're washing the dishes, then we're doing it with all your heart kind of thing. Yeah. Does there's there's something something there around when you choose to devote your devote your full attention to something, maybe flow states then come under here. Potentially. Mm, interesting. I can even that state. That you know we can that could make that make, make stuff more energizing. Yeah, I we'll just have like five minutes of me just dancing to like the elevator music in here. <laughs> Let's write a book. Let's write a book. <laughs> So I'm Jack Edwards and I make videos about books on YouTube Um, and also I'm really interested in the process of writing a book, bringing a book together and taking it from idea to fully fledged book on a bookshelf in a bookshop. That's very cool. So I help Ali with the research side of things, so finding kind of empirical evidence for the claims that we make in the book, making sure that they're all science-backed, research-backed, that they make perfect sense and just kind of brainstorming, having someone to bounce off of um, so that we kind of test everything that we're coming up with on real people. I think this book is an exciting project because we are thinking about how real people really respond to situations. Like we're not thinking about people in terms of being productivity robots motivated all the time. We're thinking about the times when you actually just don't want to do something and how to get yourself out of that rut. So I'm hoping that this will be something that everyone can actually use and apply all the time um, and can change people's way of thinking. I do think it's going to have success. <laughs> I, <laughs> should, should I just do like a marketing pitch for it? Like pre-order this, this damn book. If you think you've been to Tenerife before, this will take you to 11 Arif and 12 Arif and 14 Arif because it's that good. Even though it isn't written yet. <laughs>so I think mastery is more like um, like a sense of progress Um, like the thing that makes stuff energizing is the feeling that we are getting better at the thing Mm -hmm. and the feeling that we're using our strengths Mm -hmm. uh, maybe footnote the feeling that we are the best in our field at doing the thing Mm -hmm. but there are very few people who are genuinely the best in their field at doing the thing and I feel like that's that's more a recipe for burnout than it is a recipe for being stuff being energizing um, all of that stuff around those like hospital janitors who felt like they had a purpose, that was... Um, potentially even like parents when they have kids and suddenly their job takes on a whole new meaning because it's like, now I'm providing for my family. Mm-hmm. And so I suspe- I wonder if those people suffer from burnout less. I wonder to what extent burnout is like a sort of first world problem. Mm. Like if you're having to do three jobs to make ends meet, you're just doing it. Because right, you have to, right, have right. to feed your kids, right? You know... Th- 
I, d I don't think those people would be like, oh, I'm so burnt out. <laughs> people like us might be, I'm so burnt out. <laughs> you reckon? That's one of the nice things about having a vlog, I feel, is that, like for example, if I'm vlogging, I feel like I take more risks and do more things, um, kind of for the sake of content, but in a way, the content then actually helps me live my best life. So yeah. Limonade. That's dark there. Yeah, positive oak. That's it. So, what does that mean? No, but it's got bell in it. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, so there's that. Oh, they have like avo, avo toast and eggs and stuff. Right, well, the avo, avo toast, toast is and crazy sushi price. Well, the most, yeah, it's <laughs> many around here. Yeah. Okay. It is, I don't know what time it is. What time it is? What time is it? It's uh, 2.30 and we're halfway through the day-ish. We spent the morning having breakfast at the hotel and then doing some brainstorming for part one of the book. So we've nailed, I think, we've nailed the elevator pitch. We know what the concept is. Uh, it's the thing that we've been working, working on for the last like year or so, more than a year now. Um, and now we're finally getting into like, we've landed on a core idea, a core thesis, and now it's just about fleshing it out. We've already got a bunch of like research in here already. So we've written about probably 35,000 words, which is like half a book, half a book worth of research and stuff. But it's just a case of, with a nonfiction self-help book, themed about productivity. Most of the, the work is in the sort of figuring out the appropriate packaging, figuring out the appropriate like theme or metaphor um, because it's all like the same stuff really. You know, people say there's nothing new under the sun. Um, another phrase that one of my writing coaches likes to say is that, you know, we're all trying to sell the same sunlight. It's just, you know, it just depends what lens you reflect that sunlight, focus that sunlight through. And so we've now figured out what the lens is. And so now we're just trying to figure out where, like, what is the content. So we are in this area exploring. Thank you, thank you to Jack for, uh, for bringing us here, having some lunch. And then we're gonna head back and do a bit more brainstorming. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be lit. Loving life in Paris. <laughs> short term. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe if we do clar clarity, delay, and then we talk about, well, the next reason why we, the, finally, some, sometimes we set goals that are too difficult. And that talks into the whole, like, it's, we, we lionize people who set these big, hairy, audacious goals. Mm -hmm. But generally, if you're struggling with procrastination, you don't want to make it more difficult. You want to make, you want to lower the bar and make it as easy yeah. as possible to, to, to do the thing. And then that potentially is a segue into the second reason why we procrastinate broadly, which is not goals, but which is in fact our own abilities, our own expectancy, our own like emotional confidence, confidence, anxiety. Hi, I'm Inez. Uh, I'm a researcher based in Cambridge, uh, and my doctoral research was in economics, specifically in like healthcare and education. Uh, and I've been working with Ali's writing team uh, for a bit, and lately I've been helping out with Ali's uh, new book, which is going to be a super exciting take on our relationship with work. I think Ali's book is going to offer its readers a bunch of science-backed and community-tested strategies to have a healthier relationship with work. One message that I'm really excited about in this book is the idea that in order to um, be productive and to be sustainably productive, the secret to doing this is not to grind your teeth and like push really as hard as possible, but to, you know, to enjoy things. And I feel like this is very different to the message that we're usually told. I would consider this book to be successful if, if, if we can kind of challenge the way they normally think about their work and if we can give them a set of strategies to find what, they're, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis more fulfilling and more enjoyable. You know, I guess there are, you know, there are broader goals that we're aiming for, uh, like you know, um, hitting the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, if that happens, then that will be great. Uh, and do I think that can happen? I, 
Yeah, I, I hope so. Partly because you know it's Ali; he will he will make it happen. You know, as long as we are, you know, as long we, as we communicate our message clearly, we're clear about how the conventional narrative might not work, and we offer people like practical solutions on how they can implement the things that we're suggesting. Um, I hope I hope that delivers value, and I hope that will get get us to however we're defining success. All right, say hi to Nathaniel. Will do. And we'll catch up with you on Zoom at some point. I will. Yeah, I will. Right. Do, I will do. Yes, excellent. Okay. All right, take care, man. See ya. It's like we made we made significant progress. Okay, it feels good. like more than 24 hours. Like, yeah. It's not even 24 hours. It's yeah. hours, actually. <laughs> Just close your eyes, the sun's going down, we'll be alright, no one can hurt you down, come on in life, you and I'll be safe and sound, oh, oh. Are you recording? Just singing safe and sound from the Hunger Games soundtrack by Taylor Swift. I don't know why I was thinking about that. Oh, watch out. Whoa. So, we've arrived back in London. It's been a solid little trip to Paris. I think we spent overall, hmm. So yesterday, we left London at 7.30 p.m. and we have arrived back in London at 8.30 p.m. the following day. So in total, we've spent 25 hours in Paris, or either en route to Paris, or in Paris, or on the way back from Paris. And life is good. Life is good. That probably brings us to the end, end of the vlog. We've made progress on the book. Thank you very much for watching. Here's a playlist of more vlogs that you might like to check out. And see you later. Bye-bye.